Good morning. We're on Highway 395 southbound in Washington. Approaching Deer Park. snowing like crazy yesterday but it looks like it's kind of melted there's still some snow on the road here but it's raining right now very fine so plus two outside and I was right unloaded in cold stream yesterday and loaded at Lavington headed to Spokane Valley didn't quite make it yesterday, we're two hours short. So we're headed down that way right now. And I'm guessing we're gonna run back empty home, but, or not home, but um, to, uh, through Madeline Falls to uh, Salmo and then probably loaded Castle Gar, just north of Castle Gar. Our regular load spot. All roads lead to Castlegar. Why do all roads lead to Castlegar? Because we've got a contract there. And that contract is our bread and butter. There's a nice little fresh layer of snow on the trees. It's actually coming down pretty heavy, actually. It's very fine, but it's coming down pretty good. Speed up the wiper a bit. Let's see if the scale is open. I doubt it, it is. I think I've seen it open once all the times I've dri driven by here. I don't drive here, by here a lot, but I've seen it open once. feels too fast. And that feels too slow. One in between the two. <laughs> Clayton. I guess this community is Clayton. Once we get uh, south of uh, Deer Park, we get onto Four Lane Highway. For a little while anyway. No lights, guys, come on. It's dawn, it's raining, no lights. What if I had decided to pass that school bus? I can't see you until the last minute. Passing lane here. Now, oh, if I had remembered that, I would have probably stayed closer to the school bus bumper. It is going a bit under the speed limit. That's okay, it's going almost speed limit, so we'll just keep following it. Okay, scale is a mile away. Now 
Now the GPS doesn't have every scale, but it's nice that it has most scales. That way you go, oh, okay, scale coming up ahead, good. Uh, keep your eyes open. You're paying attention to the scale signs. I hate to get a ticket for driving by the scale. Way station closed. As I expected. Now the one that was up by Kettle Falls, that one's open quite often. It wasn't open last night, but that one is open quite often. Green Stagger sitting there. And we'll have to speed up the wipers again. Just coming down a little too hard for that speed. Just such a fine, fine. It, basically, it's snow, snowflakes melted into these little drops of rain. slowing down. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Basically, just keep going straight. There's two of them over here. I'm going from 60 miles per hour into a roundabout. Doesn't make the most sense in the world, but... That is what they've done. At the roundabout, take the second exit to US 395. And it's also put in big curbs. I wish you would signal so I knew what you were doing. See? Signaling works. I guess I only signal to exit the roundabout, so... I guess maybe I should signal the other way, too. <laughs> if I don't intend to turn off. Roundabouts are just far enough apart that you can get almost up to speed and then you gotta slow down again. And Deer Park seems like a decent sized town. It's got some good grocery stores. At the roundabout, Take the second exit to US-395. Few, few fast food joints. got marker lights on but headlights would be better you can't see those marker lights until you're close I wonder if 
the day is going to be like this all day. I got a feeling uh, the Paulson is going to be interesting with weather like this. I didn't check today morning if the chain up lights are on or anything like that. I'm like, won't bother until I know where I'm going. And once I'm loaded, then then we'll look at the road conditions of the passes. We got four lane after Deer Park. I still think I'm right. We'll see what happens up over this hill. Yeah, yeah, we're only a couple miles from Spokane, so we gotta get four lane here pretty quick. ABS comes on and off every now and then. I mentioned it when I was in the shop last time. They said they tested everything and couldn't find anything wrong with the system. So, once again, I have no idea where the ABS sensor is. I have a good idea what the ABS sensor looks like, understand how it works. How it senses if the wheel is moving or not, but where is the sensor and what could be causing the sensor not to be working right? That those answers I don't know. I'm not a mechanic. I am not mechanically inclined. I know somebody asked me what kind of transmission I run in my truck, and I'm like, I don't know. I have not looked at what kind of transmission is in this truck. I'm not even sure where I would find the info to see what kind of transmission I run in this truck. It's not stated obviously in the truck anywhere, but... I just enjoy driving. That's why I don't think I could ever be a owner operator. Because <clears throat> if, if you want to be an owner operator, you should be a little more mechanically inclined, do a lot of the work yourself. Like I can do my own oil changes and stuff like that, and grease and stuff like that, but that's really basic, simple stuff. <coughs> This is the beginning of the four lane. Mm -hmm. Can I hear that? 
other side isn't two lane yet, so it's only three lanes so far. I thought the other side split up, but not quite yet, I guess. in front of me. Right now he is 1 1,000, 2 1,000, three, one, 3 seconds away. He cut in closer than that, probably about 2 seconds in front of me. I like to keep a solid 5-6 seconds. Spokane we go. Take the northern corridor again, just like we did two weeks ago. When I had that backup truck, I managed to get one US run. In the last month, I managed to get one US run. I did get all the IFTA stickers and all the paperwork, all that sorted out. I still didn't stick my transponder to the windshield. But I really just want to tape it onto the windshield. We replace windshields so often. That way I can just cut the tape when we replace windshield and retape it onto the new windshield. Apparently the transponders are free to replace, but I go to the US so often we'd have to wait to get a transponder. It might be a week or two for me losing loads to the US. whether to pass this car or not. Where'd that rock come from? Don't see a chip anywhere. Could be behind something too. Okay, yeah, we gotta pass this car. Inconsistent speed. fluctuating up and down 10 miles. If you're going slightly under speed, fine, that's fine, but fluctuating back and forth that far is not cool with me. Ah, 
past little give a little bit extra space before oh there's a lot of people merging on maybe I'll just stay on this side Someone beside me. Key to that is remembering that they're there because I can't see them right beside me very quite a few places beside the truck I can't see them so you got to remember where they are and also when you get to an off-ramp keep an eye on the off-ramp to see if they turn off. feeling most of these people are going to turn off here into Spokane, like I used to always do. Nicely. before we got to turn off here. Well, if you remember last time, you're forced to turn off. I think it'll be really nice once this corridor is all the way finished. So passing over Highway 2, which will be taking north to Madeline Falls, most likely, once I'm unloaded here. That's my prediction. I suspect I won't get home until late on Friday evening because I think I'm going to get a load castle car that goes to Vancouver and then I'll get some kind of load headed uh, back home from Vancouver area. But I don't think I'll get to Vancouver tonight. Because of that, I think I'm going to have a late Friday tomorrow. slowing down here which is good hopefully the passes are pretty good by the time I hit them that's one of my little you know nagging th thoughts in the back of my head I'm like I may be chaining up today Go wide, a 
lots of room. Oh, yeah, really flat tire. in half a mile. I think it's kind of ended already, hasn't it? I guess the highway is just a one lane, or I guess two lane, but one lane each direction. Did they actually plow that section? Why? Just as an emergency U-turn road? At the roundabout, no, there's take no the way across. To North Freya Street. That's weird. Why would they even plow that section? It makes no sense at all. Future highway Take number the first blah blah exit blah. To North it's already part of the same highway. Tank of fuel, one quarter mile, a little Turn over half a tank of Francis Avenue. DEF. So we should have no problem getting back across the border before I need to fuel up. Last time I fueled up was in Kamloops. Didn't fuel up yesterday. Turn left at the traffic light. long green light.
reason why they're not going to four lane this part of the highway is because once that freeway is completed there'll be a lot less people turning off here we'll be turning off a little bit further down the down the road a little further down the freeway before we turn off I missed them all. More potholes. section here out in the country. Well, it looks like those trees are in danger of closing the highway down, huh? The way they're leaning across the road. Hopefully they got a good root system. to stop sprinkling which would be nice I get to take the straps off when it's not raining now it's a bonus momentum up this one this time right around 35 kilometer or miles 35 miles Just kind of keeping it there so I think I'm learning the highway enough that I know that if I stick around 35 I can do all the corners nice and safely don't slow down more than that and just keep keep the throttle pinned once we're at 35 snowmobile tracks on the field somebody was having fun in snow holy smoke that's a deep pothole Unfortunately at night you often don't see them in time. And that's got to be rough on the tires when you hit some of those big potholes. Not to mention the suspension and all that too. Turn right 
stopped at the traffic light. Five at the bottom. There's no problem with the load that I have here. The engine will hold it no problem at about 40 miles, so it's 45 here, so all I need is a little bit of brake right about now. Oh, that's a big pothole. Nobody's beside me. I'm going a little wide. I get so many potholes this time of year is the freezing thawing. The water gets in all the cracks, freezes, spreading the cracks out, and then thaws out again. So now it's broken up the pavement even more, and then we drive over it, kicking out all the small pieces. No, I don't need the wipers. quads on the back of that trailer all with tracks on them that was pretty cool I was kind of hoping to get the quad out this weekend we'll see how the weather is we'll see what the weather's like it's 
especially if we want to clean out the truck as well. Probably not this weekend, but if the weather's just perfect, I might just have to say forget cleaning the truck, go quadding instead. As you can see, the weather has changed a bit. <laughs> we are back in Canada. Currently on Highway 6, northbound to Nelson, because I wasn't willing to take the Bombay. I had to go to the Sound Law office, drop off my paperwork, pick up a new load strap, and uh, pick up some extra washer fluid. Anyway, which means I'm already 10 minutes down this road. If I can keep going, it's a whole, what, seven minutes. It takes me seven minutes longer going around this way through Nelson instead of taking Highway 3 over Bombay to Castlegar to where I have to load in Thrums. I'm like, well, for seven minutes or so, it's probably less than that because you have to climb Bombay here. There's no real climbing. And with the weather like this, steep climb in slushy snow who knows what the summit looks like I'll take the longer way longer way might end up being the shorter way and even if it ends up being the longer way it's only a longer by a little bit I also took the time to stop and talk to the guys in the shop Borrowed a drill and drill bit, and drilled uh, holes in my toolboxes. Just two of them, the ones that hold the straps. The ones that hold the tarps and my other gear, um, because I never put anything wet in there, there's no water sitting on the bottom. The seals are pretty good waterproof. What's putting the water in is into the toolboxes is all the wet straps soaked down to the bottom. There's like an inch and a half of water sitting in my toolboxes, and that becomes a problem when you go to uh, colder temperatures Ooh, little little drifting there no 30 wheel drift just just the rear end of the truck kicking out a couple of millimeters probably it, you can just feel that it's not secure to the to the highway the untrained well, actually anybody looking at me wouldn't know that I was drifting that's how little drifting I'm doing but I can feel it in the throttle that I am throttle and the steering wheel that I'm uh, a little bit sideways around some of these corners so definitely I'll have to take our time Looks like the conditions are not improving Turning from slush to less and less and less slush. That's okay. We have no serious climbs left over here, so should be fine. We'll definitely take our time going downhill into Nelson, but it is gorgeous, absolutely beautiful out here. So I was wrong with the load I thought I was gonna get. I am actually 
loading at Klesnikov, where I thought I was going to load, but I'm not going to the beach. I'm uh, delivering to Merit. And then after that, my guess is I'm going to head to Vernon and get a load there, going to Katera for Monday. I think that's how my week, week is going to look now, which means I should be home around lunch tomorrow. Well, it depends how long it takes me to get to Merritt. There are, Jess was saying that the Highway 3 was closed at times due to accidents and incidents, so we'll see uh, if I can get, it to, get to Merritt tonight. If I can get to Merritt tonight, I should be able to get home fairly early tomorrow. No plow. I always slow down and pull as far to the right I can. That way they can clear as much of the snow as they can if possible. Sometimes they like crossing the center line to get that snow off the road too. I like to give them room to do that. brakes were still on. Oh, I'm leave them on, but I'm going to have them on setting one. It's still grippy here, but if all of a sudden gets a little more snow covered, turn them off. Actually, maybe I will turn them off. If I need them, I'll just click it on. It's probably the safer way of doing it. Still low on fuel. I haven't fueled up yet, which means I have to keep that in mind when loading, not to load right to the max PSIs. Got to decide where I want to fuel up. I've got a quarter tank left. Do I want to fuel up in Castlegar? Maybe. Give me more grip over the mountains, having maxing out my weight. Oh yeah, it's slippery here. Okay, let's turn the heat up. We need some heat to the windshield. Wipers can't deal with all the snow. Yeah, it seems to be a little more grippy around this corner. It's slushier. We're gonna treat it as if it's black ice anyway. Although in the mirror I can see it's not, but... It's plus two degrees Celsius. Pretty cool when you see the snow falling off of trees. I suspect I'm going to be chaining up today to climb Paltz and, and then what's the road going to be like from Merritt to, or from Princeton to Merritt? Will I be chaining up there as well?
we shall see. I got all the heat going to the windshield. I gotta crack the windows open. It's too warm in here. As a rule, I always try to keep the windshield cold. That way the snow just bounces off the windshield, doesn't stick, and blows around the side. But when you're at plus two degrees, it doesn't matter what you do, the snow is gonna stick to the windshield. So you gotta heat up your wipers in the windshield so that it melts. slush here here it looks like they've plowed both lanes here there's our summit all downhill here I'm gonna turn engine brakes on stage one Driving a big rig is nothing like driving a car. I always say automatic transmission, but it's not really an automatic transmission. It's a manual transmission controlled by the computer. So we have manual transmissions in these trucks where the computer does the shifting. The computer engages the clutch, does the shifting. Also, we're throwing switches all the time. Turning on power divider, turning on the diff locks, uh, engine brake button, engine brake level, one, two, and three, fan override. We use the fan all the time to slow us down going down a steep hill too. Turning the fan on uh, robs the engine of some horsepower, which means it slows you down going down the mountain. So you're always clicking on switches. Time to do our brake check. right around this corner. There, nope. There it is. I just know you can't come in too fast because it all of a sudden just pops up around the corner. locks here off the throttle a little bit you don't want to be spinning the tires while you engage the locks there we go if you engage the locks while you're spinning tires it could really destroy the gears in the axles very bad idea Turn them back off. Just had the one, only lock the front axle. Get me going. 
Well, I was getting going fine. I, I just wanted to get going quicker. Yeah, I got lots of slush here. Let's go engine brakes higher. On stage two. I think we'll go to stage three. <laughs> Excuse me. A lot more traffic between the summit to the ski hill, which means um, the road's got more heat going into it, melts more. Also, they do a good, better job plowing it because there's more traffic. And we're losing altitude quickly, so. Still plus two, but I guess it does make a difference. Half a degree here and there makes makes a difference. When it starts getting into this melting here, you really have to start watching for pooling water. You have the snow on the shoulder. Now here we're going down hills, so it's not as big a deal, but wherever it's flat, with the snow on the shoulder, the water has nowhere to go. And just pools on the highway. delivered here before. This is gray shop here. Luckily it was not in the winter. That yard would have been hard to get in and out of in the winter. With the angle, just the contours and shapes of the yard. I think I'd probably have to chain up to get out of that yard. See if we can grab a lower gear here. Okay, okay. I didn't mean to shift twice, I just wanted one gear. I understand. Now it's just down again. <laughs> Oh, 50. I missed the 50 ahead sign. That's okay. I was going under 70 anyway, so... I think I got it before I got caught speeding. And yes, I get caught for speeding with no cops around, because... we have uh, the safety feature where if any of our drivers speed, um, satellite message sends out to home office and lets them know that, hey, so-and-so is speeding. I'm sure I show up on that list every now and then where I go a little bit over, but I've only ever gotten one email saying, hey, what happened here type of thing. And that was a crazy snowstorm at night I just flat out missed the speed limit sign. Just like I did here. But here I was going slower. There I kept speeding until my GPS started beeping away at me. Okay, we're going to have to get in the slush here or else we're going to hit those poles. Uh, I don't want 
want to hit those poles. Oncoming traffic, none. Okay. There's some standing water. The trailers are making quite the splash. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's not very clean water. Continue on Highway 3A. But I could see how a car could seriously hydroplane in water like that. The roads are definitely better here. Whew. By the time I'm loaded, it'll be getting dark, so I think we'll call it here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Another long video. Are you guys okay with these really long videos? You guys really don't have to watch to the end. If you guys watch the first 15 minutes and call it good, I'm happy with that. You guys have done your part. And if you do watch the whole thing and enjoy it, and want me to keep doing these really long videos, let me know. Or else I might start doing shorter videos again. So if you enjoy these really long ones, let me know. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up. You guys absolutely rock. I'll see you tomorrow.